Thanks for tuning in to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. Here you'll find tips, insight, and information to help your music and your ministry succeed. Whether you're a singer, a musician, or a songwriter, we want to help you where you are, but we also want to help you get to where you want to go. We believe that our talents are God's gift to us, but what we do with those are our gift back to God. Yesterday's information is important, but what we can learn today will make this the best day yet. Hey there, Rob Novell here, your host for the CNS podcast, The Best Day Yet. Hope this finds all well with you today. Excited to be back for another weekly episode of the Charles Novell podcast. We love doing this and we're getting great feedback. We're hearing from many of you that um, you are taking things away from these. And you know what? That really makes me happy because that's why we're doing these. We are up to, this is our 43rd episode. Man, that's so hard to believe. I feel like uh, we just started these a couple weeks ago, but we started these uh, in the fall of 22. And here we are. We're still going strong. We will end this year out. Um, and we will start into a second season of these podcasts. So looking forward to just continuing to move forward with these. Like always, we we like just to bring different and uh, random topics each week. Not so much random in, in the content, but just in the progression of these. Um, they don't necessarily connect one week to the other. And that's intentional. That's on purpose. Today... We are talking about our title. Well, we're talking about songwriting, but our title is Let's Talk Number One Hits. So this is going to be a fun one. I'm excited about today's episode. But before we move on, I do want to mention CNS 23 is coming. It's quickly, quickly coming. We are uh, we're about six weeks away. uh, And that's exciting. We work hard all year on this, and when we get here to the final push, it's um, just there's an anticipation. I I know uh, we are getting ready to release the schedule, and um, this is absolutely the um, most diverse, informative, um, complete schedule that we've ever had for a CNS summer session. So really excited about getting this out to our students that are registered. We have a private Facebook page that we communicate with them as they register. We add them to this page and we'll be releasing the schedule there. But you know what? I would love to see you get an invite to that private page. How do you do that? You register for CNS 20. Three, we um we're we are getting ready to have to cap out for this year. There's only so many uh, spots available. CNS, I put a I put a post out on social media this past week, and man, it's our DNA. CNS is our focus is our students, and we want to give every student one or multiple opportunities to get up and perform during the week. And the math is real simple. There's only so much that we can do. There's only so many hours in a week. So uh, we are approaching um, having to cap out for this year. So if you are on the fence, man, we need to hear from you sooner than later. I would hate to hear from someone and I, I would have to tell them, hey, look, we're full for this year, but we are taking applications for CNS 24. So there's still time to get in. And again, what you're going to study at CNS, CNS, uh, we offer voice, uh, piano, guitar, bass, guitar, drums, uh, different instruments. We offer songwriting. We offer sound systems and technology. So there are multiple paths of study that you can go down and you're not committed just to that. If you do sign up and come as say a vocal uh, emphasis, you still, you have the ability to attend songwriting class. You have the ability to attend piano labs. You have the ability to attend song, uh, or I'm sorry, sound system seminars. So you're not just committed to one thing. You're 
able to go and come around the schedule. So uh, we would love again to have you with us. If you have any questions, I would love to talk to you. You can contact us at www.cnsmusic.com. You can find out more information about CNS there right on the homepage. It, you can click to register for this summer session. All we need at this point is a deposit of $125 that secures your spot. The balance is due a little later, so you don't have to pay in full at this time. We just need a deposit to get you registered, get you in the books, get you scheduled with a private instructor. So reach out to us again, www.cnsmusic.com. It's July 16th through the 22nd at Murray State University in Murray, Kentucky. We would love to see you there. Okay, today we're talking songwriting, and specifically, we're, we're going to talk about number one songs. I know all of you songwriters out there, you're, you're waiting today to find out how to write that next number one song, and you know what? We are going to talk about that today, and you know, songwriting is something um, at CNS, we really, really, really believe in songwriting. My, my dad felt like every student at the school should attend the songwriting classes because some of our best songs, maybe the best songs, are written out of personal experience. People telling their story, and no one can tell your story like you can tell your story. So we feel like everyone should uh, sit down, take the time to learn the craft of songwriting. Songwriting is no different than singing or playing an instrument. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is it requires our time. What we get out of songwriting is what we put into songwriting. I have had so many debatable conversations with people that say, look, you can't teach me songwriting. Uh, my songs are divinely inspired of God. He wakes me up in the middle of the night. I have to reach over on the dresser or the nightstand and write my words down on a tissue because that's all I have there. Uh, well, my first question is, if, if, if God wakes you up to give you a song in the middle of the night, and you're, you know this, why aren't you prepared? Why don't you have a notebook there? Why don't you have something to write it? Why does it have to be the tissue? So my point is this. Yes, songs can come out of divine inspiration like that. 100% believe in that. But I also believe that we can work at developing the skill and the craft of songwriting. We're going to talk about some things today that will um, help you write your songs more efficiently, more better, mo better, <laughs> and with with uh, more thought and, and, and maybe quality control is a good way to look at this. Some things that you can use as measuring tools uh, maybe some brand new concepts to some of you, maybe reinforcement for some of you writers that may be listening. We may talk about things that you're already doing, <clears throat> but we may bring some some light on uh, to a subject today to maybe hopefully help something click for you in a special way. Before we get into, I've, I've got, um, I don't know, I've got seven or eight points here, um, maybe a few more that I want to go through today, but I want to read a list of songs to you. And here, here's where I'm heading with this. Um, this list of songs, not one of these went to number one. These are going to be secular songs, multiple genres from this list. I, you know what? I, I'm not going to apologize if it, that's offensive to someone. Well, I do want to apologize for that. My point is this. You know what? Sometimes in order to um, be the best that we can be, we've got to look at different models, different things. And these songs that I'm going to read off this list, they're not bad songs. You've heard these songs, maybe not all of them, but it's hard to even maybe a, a commercial or go to the movies and not hear one of these songs off this list that I'm going to sing to you. Here's the crazy thing about this. Not one of these went number one. Many of these did not even break the top 40. And some of these did not even break the top 100 on their respective charts. So here's a list. 
Jolene from Dolly Parton. You know what? Uh, that's a big one. It's Raining Men, The Weather Girls. Now, I got to be completely transparent. I know the song. I've heard it practically my whole life. Had no clue who the artist was. That drives home the point I'm going to make here in a minute even more is the fact that you know the song. You don't even know the artist. But The Weather Girls, It's Raining Men. Hmm. Um, I can connect those dots right there. All right. Uh, Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. Uh, Tiny Dancer, uh, Elton John. Uh, You Can't Always Get What You Want, The Rolling Stones. Landslide by Fleetwood Mac. Uh, California Dreamin', The Mamas and the Papas. Uh, Stand By Me, Benny King. Uptown Girl, Billy Joel. Uh, Here's a big one, Thriller from Michael Jackson. Uh, When I Call Your Name, Vince Gill. Fancy, Reba. Crazy, this is crazy, Patsy Cline. You mean that that was not a number one song? Uh, Purple Rain, the artist formerly known as Prince and known as Prince on today's episode of the CNS podcast, the best, best day yet. Uh, Great Balls of Fire, Jerry Lee Lewis. Okay, so again, that list of songs, you know those songs. In fact, if I think of Dolly Parton, I think of Jolene. If I think of Reba, I think of Fancy. <laughs> Definitely if I think of Patsy Cline, I'm thinking Crazy. Uh, Purple Rain, you know, kind of the big one for Prince. Uh, Great Balls of Fire. Again, I'm thinking Jerry Lee Lewis. Maybe some of these others, Elton John's, Queens. There's maybe others. Uh, Landslide. Absolutely a a huge song for the band and the group Fleetwood Mac. Um, Can't Always Get What You Want, The Rolling Stones. Um, It's Rainy Men. Okay, let's go back to that one, The Weather Girls. Again, had no clue who that artist was until I was doing my research for today's episode. And, you know, one of the fun side things for me in doing these uh, podcasts each week is as, uh, and this is the nature of teaching, as you teach, you learn. In order to do these, I, you know, I don't just hit record and just randomly start talking <laughs> Maybe you've listened to some of these and thought that was my approach, but I actually do put some time into these. And when I was looking across this, this list and there, you all, I I read, I don't know how many I read a dozen, 15, there's, there are hundreds more that are again, head scratchers. And the fact that these artists are known for these songs and not a one of them was a number one. So, and us, you know, with the title today, let's talk number one songs. Here's what I want to talk about. I think sometimes we get so caught up in the competitive nature of trying to write that next number one song that we lose focus on just writing a great song. You know what? You may be trying to write a number one song And that whole list I just read you, man, those are anthems. Those are anthems for all those artists. Those artists are known for those songs. What do you want? A song to go number one for a month or two? Uh, Or do you want something that maybe God could use your pen to write that that could become an anthem? I've heard these songs um, on commercials. Think about that. You write it, an artist cuts it, it goes here, it goes there, it comes back, it's in a movie, it comes back, it's on a commercial. You know what? At the end of the day, that song is going to be extremely successful because it's it's making its circles and falling into places that maybe if you're just trying to write uh, the next number one song. I Some, some funny stories, um, well, one in particular... When I traveled 91 to 95 with a Southern Gospel Quartet called Perfect Heart, played bass guitar for them. We, um, the group, uh, they were the first, and uh, Phil Cross may have done this after them, but Perfect Heart was the first group whose first single went number one. And also, now Perfect Heart is the only group this has happened to, their first single went number one. And then won Song of the Year at the National Quartet Convention at the Singing News Fan Awards. No other group has ever done that. 
it was a huge, huge song. Somebody touched the Lord. And I, you know, when I look back at, and try to connect the dots on some things, I joined them about nine months later. I didn't start with them. I joined them about nine months in. And man, when I got there and I saw um, the the reach of that particular song, Somebody Touched the Lord, um, you know, Sandy Knight was not intending when she wrote that to write a number one song or the song of the year. She was just having God speak to her so he could speak through her. And what a powerful uh, message. Somebody got another prayer through. Somebody touched the Lord. Uh, somebody just touched heaven. Um, you know, that's what it's all about is getting our prayers through for, for ourselves. Yes, but there's times we've got to intercede for other people. And God began to show me kind of the mantle that he had placed on that ministry. And when I joined, man, it was very um, exciting to know that I was joining a bunch of guys whose focus was ministry. Yeah, all I ever wanted to do was get on a bus and travel and play music, but um, it had to be ministry ministry focused and ministry driven. The, the house I grew up in, yes, it was musical, but it was ministry first and foremost. So seeing uh, that song, I think, was sent to them at a time. That was a God-ordained thing. Now, I'm not speaking against number one songs today. I think they're great. But here's the thing. Sometimes I think uh, it's better to concentrate on just writing a good song, writing a great song, than it is trying to write the, the next number one song. All right. So uh, don't, I'm not saying don't set the bar high again I was raised, I come from a background, we never reached the bar because when we did, dad just raised it. He, he would pop it up another notch or two. So, you know, we are constantly, I'm still chasing that bar, I'm trying to be the best that I can be. So there's nothing, nothing wrong with setting a bar, but at the same time, let's not lose focus of why we do what we do. I think in, in the, in the field of Christian music and as a Christian songwriter, man, first and foremost, we should be writing songs that are going to minister to people, touch their lives, potentially cause them to surrender their life to the Lord and make him savior of their life. That's why we do what we do. If it's about awards, if it's about number ones, you know what? Write for secular music. Man, there's nothing wrong with, I, I've got friends that write for country music and for Southern Gospel and CCM Contemporary Christian Music. There's nothing wrong with that at all. If that's what you want to do and you want to, you know, climb the ladder and chase the, the awards and that success, that's great. But I think just speaking to you today, honestly, our, our focus has to be on the ministry side of things. So I want to talk today some things that I think will help us focus more on writing good songs that can go out and reach people. So number one, here we go. Write a memorable, catchy melody. There are millions of songs uh, that share basically the same three chords, what we call our primary chords, one, four, and five. Occasionally, we can get a fourth chord in there, uh, one, four, or five with a two minor. We might see a six minor in there. Uh, we're going to talk a little later about, um, you know, trying to get a little more creative with your chord structure. Um, actually, that's that's where we're going to go, number two. But let's keep talking here. Basically, you all, every progression that's possible has already been written what separates our songs is the melody. What is recognizable in our songs is the melody. I do do this a lot with my piano students when we're when we start getting in to improvising and chord building and, and some various things. I'll play um, I'll play the chord progression of Jingle Bells and I'll ask them, "Do you know what song that is?" And they just look at me because they're clueless what song that is. Then I play the melody and it doesn't usually just like name that tune, you know, three, four notes in, they tell me that's Jingle Bells. And, and then I tell them, well, I was playing the same song a while ago, but here's the difference. 
we have melody, and we have accompaniment in music. Our chord progressions, you all, are basically have all been worn out and used over and over. What separates it and what, you know, really makes it stand out is a good, catchy melody. So why do some of these songs get stuck in our head? The list that we talked about earlier, um, the answer is melody. It's that simple. So if you're trying to write a good or a great song to stand out, the melody has to be the most important part of your songwriting process. That's why we're talking at first. Successful melodies typically move in a stepwise motion, up or down, either a half step or a whole step with a few leaps, up or down, uh, any larger interval. They also often have a focal point, a high note in the melodic passage that anchors the rest of the melody. So mem memorable, memorable melodies. I, I had a... a <laughs> I had an individual send me a song via Facebook Messenger this past week. And doing what I do, I, I get a lot of this. I'll have um, songwriters reach out to me. Um, I have a studio counterpoint recording in Atlanta, Georgia. I record demos for songwriters. I make soundtracks for them. Um, so I, I, I work with songwriters a lot. So this person sent this this tuned to me the other day uh, with it was acapella and they sent me quite a, a lengthy uh, message with it explaining their goals for this song and they have large goals everybody so i hit play and they started singing creative lyrics but it was to a very 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 familiar uh song that we would all know if i mentioned it and you know what, that um, not only is that not being creative and coming up with a catchy melody, maybe they think they are because, yes, it already is a catchy melody. But uh, you know what, that's plagiarism and all kinds of other things that we're not talking about today. Write your own melody, make it memorable, make it catchy. How do you do that? Through practice, through trial and error. Number two, use all type of chords. We just talked about Basically, we use primary chords. We throw a, a two minor, a six minor in there with it. But if you only stick to the same few chords as you write songs, you're going to limit the scope of your musical ideas. But more importantly, all your songs are going to sound alike. So try composing songs that contain all types of chords. A couple weeks back, we did a podcast, 850 chords in 30 minutes or whatever that title was. We did it. We pulled it off. We talked about major, minor, dominant, diminished, augmented. We talked seventh chords. We talked ninth chords. Try using new chords for a more complex and interesting sound. It's real simple. You use the same chords all the time. You're going to get stuck in the same rut. So if you know what, if you aren't real familiar with chords this day and age, you're, you, if you're hearing this podcast that means there are thousands of other podcasts that you can listen to to get help with building chords. Type it in. Whatever platform you're listening to this on, they have a search feature. Type in there how to build chords. Look what comes up. Stretch yourself. Start writing more complex chord structures and you'll get a more interesting sound. Number three, create a memorable rhythm. So my two favorite parts of music... Harmony, since I was a little kid, um, good harmony, good, oh, good three-part, four-part if it's done right, good three-part harmony, man, I feel it inside my toes. And um, if it's not good three-part harmony, I feel it outside my toes because it bothers me. <laughs> as good as the good affects me, the bad affects me just, just as much. But the second thing that I love about music is rhythm. And honestly, it, it, it's probably my favorite aspect of, of music. And think about it. There is one huge difference with Christian music versus secular music, and that's lyric content. But at the end of the day, I've had students come in and say, can you teach me a country G chord? Can you teach me a rock and roll E chord? And I'm like, no. But I can teach you a C chord. I can teach you a G. I can teach you an E. Chords are chords. The main thing that separates them is lyric content. 
But the second thing that separates one genre of music from another is rhythm. So many of the catchiest, most popular songs, you know what, from country to pop to rock to Christian, uh, they're memorable because of a, of a rhythmic idea or what we can even call a musical hook. We talk a lot about the hook with lyrics, but we can have a musical hook as well. So uh, many of our songs are known because of a memorable rhythmic hook. You know what? In fact, the next time you listen to your favorite music or, or just l- l- in listening to music in general, take note of how, you know, a syncopated or a funky, um, you know, melody or, or backing track can be can grab your ear and can, and and honestly, it will be the most memorable, catchiest part of the song. Uh, Then get creative with your own writing and try to use rhythm to take your writing to the next level. Here's, here's a few on the idea of rhythm. Elvira. That rhythm, that bass line, um, you know, we would not have, I'm a bass player, we would not have had the whole Motown era had it not been for the rhythmic bass lines in that music. So rhythm really helps things stand out and make things different. Uh, Blue Suede Shoes, Elvis, you know what? Uh, that one is known rhythmically. A Pretty Woman, Roy Orbison. Do 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 pretty woman da 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 all right you didn't know you're tuning in to hear me sing these classic songs uh California girls that de 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 under pressure uh Queen Deb uh David Bowie do 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 rhythm staying alive the Bee Gees in fact oh one of my I love watching uh, the office. And there's an episode on there where they are, um, taking CPR class and the, uh, instructor of the CPR lesson that day, uh, asked them if they know how to give the chest compressions. And she used the idea of the song, staying alive, uh, 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 staying alive, staying alive, Push, 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 push. So rhythms, rhythms stick out with us. Rhythms help us remember things. So try being more creative with your rhythms. Uh, Build your song around a riff or a musical hook. We kind of just talked that, but to drive that down a little further, you know, whether you're a guitarist, a pianist, uh, if if you're an instrumentalist, or even if you're a non-instrumentalist, you can compose riffs that will anchor the entire song, um, that can be some of the best songwriting tools at your disposal. You know, some of these songs, again, Under Pressure, again, we just talked about the do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Uh, the song Jump, do-do-do-do-do-do-do, the final countdown, da 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 Beat It, Free Falling by Tom Petty. Um, man, these songs, I'm using these because, again, these are the final countdown is is in um, all kinds of, of commercials and free falling has been in different places under pressure. I've seen that. And these songs are memorable because of certain things. And my, my dad used to call it this way. He he, he preached versatility in me and I, I pushed the envelope probably there. And boy, he would reel me back in. I had I had weekly he would, he'd come in my room as I was growing up weekly and need to see my music. And he would make a determination whether I should have that song or that music in his house or not. And definitely in my life or not. So, you know what? Um, Yes, I'm talking secular music and I listen to secular music. I am very selective in what I do listen to, but as a a musician, there are things that inspire me and create, uh, have helped me, take ideas and apply into my music and into my ministry. And dad would, dad called it this way. He said, it's Robin Hood. It's the Robin Hood approach. What was Robin Hood all about? Stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. So the rich people 
call them secular writers. Us poor people, that's me. I'm raising both hands right now. You just can't see me. So write your songs around riffs. Number five, write lyrics. We talked about this a while ago from personal experience. This can be from your own situation or someone close to you. I, I've shared this before. I, I have been co-writing with people for decades. Um, I didn't branch out and, and until about seven, eight years ago and write my own song until I was on the couch one night. My son was going through some things um, health-wise. Um, I passed on the gene of migraine headaches to my son Not what I wanted to give him in life, but I did. And we had had him in and out of doctors and various places and this and that. And I was sitting on the couch one night praying, reading my Bible, studying, just thinking of of, uh, my son and uplifting him to the Lord. And I read a passage, um, I believe it was 1 Samuel, that said, about this time tomorrow. And man, that jumped off the page and slapped me on both sides of my head And I grabbed some pen and paper. I don't know. Within 15 minutes, I had written a song. Um, Let's talk about that real quick. It didn't stay there. That song has evolved. And, you know, but in 15 minutes, I wrote a song. But listen, just because I had it complete in 15 minutes, it was only complete because I had been working on it for 15 minutes. And at that point... I had a couple verses, a chorus, and a tag, and okay, it's done. But you get away from it. You come back. You look into it. And you start to realize, um, man, those songs aren't completely done. They've got to be worked and we reworked. And you know, this is where when I talk with people about the whole divine inspiration thing, I believe in that. God gave me this song that night, not in 15 minutes. He literally gave it to me in seconds when I read about this time tomorrow. But that doesn't mean that the song itself will come that fast or have to come that fast. I have notebooks full um, of ideas, of different uh, lines, different words, different hooks. I've heard it called this way, the ho- your hook book. I, I have all kinds of ideas that God's given me that have never really went any further. And occasionally uh, when I'm writing, if I'm struggling with something, man, I'll pull that book or one of those books out and God might lead me to something that he gave me years ago that will fit that situation in that moment where I am, I'm working on creating something. Um, So right from personal experience, it's the best way to do this. Number six, step away from your instrument to write. What do I mean by that? Well, common logic would suggest that you should write songs while seated at your piano or holding your guitar. And most of the time this works great, but it may cause you back to fall backwards on, you know, familiar songs, familiar things. We all, at whatever level of proficiency, proficiency we are at, we all have our limitations. And I know I have caught myself numerous times coming up with something and then it hit me, wait a minute, I've used that melody. I've used that chord progression. I've used that rhythm. I've done this before. Uh, Sometimes I can pinpoint it immediately. Other times I I stop and think for a minute. And then I realize, um, I realize what it, what it is. That's, you know, I, this sounds so much like something else that I did. I'll connect those two dots. So, you know, if you're a musician, it's great to write at your instrument, but try setting the instrument down. Uh, You know what? Go outside, write melodies and, and, and rhythms in your head. If you have some good ideas, sing them into a voice recorder or into your smartphone, Uh, then return to your instrument and figure out how to play them instrumentally. Uh, A couple weeks ago, I I shared, we were at the beach celebrating our 25th anniversary and God gave me so many ideas just sitting out there at that beach. Wasn't nowhere near an instrument, um, but he gave me ideas that when I got back from that trip, I sat down and actually um, kind of developed a few of those ideas and, and have started to take them somewhere. So if you're an instrumentalist, try writing away 
from your instrument. Number seven, uh, get creative with song structure. Probably one of, as I'm working with songwriters, one of my biggest critiques is this. Not every single song has to follow the mold of verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, tag. Try mixing that up. Uh, most songs contain some combination of that, uh, you know, an intro, a verse, a pre-chorus, a chorus, a bridge, uh, instrumental solos, a coda or an outro, a tag. Uh, you know what? Challenge yourself to write a song that does more than just go back and forth between verses and choruses. Mix it up. Uh, I like to do back-to-back -back verses. If 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 it's a um, if the the theme of the song fits, I like to change keys in between back back to back verses uh, to to what we're telling stories right musically key changes help um, with uh, drama it helps build um, create a, a moment there musically so get creative with mixing up verses and choruses and don't you don't have to write a bridge to every song a lot of times bridges <laughs> bridges come because you've got extra lyrics left over uh, another situation i've i've worked with a, a lady that became a good songwriter but it started she wrote poetry and um she would send me these poems and i would go in and select what I felt was the hook and make a chorus and then find verses and choruses. And we had so many leftover words that at times one poem literally turned into two songs. So mix up song structure. Number eight, approach your lyric writing with both structure and spontane spontaneity. What do I mean by that? Writing lyrics is tricky. Have a plan for your lyrics pr process, but leave space for some discovery. I've been listening to some great podcasts that have opened my way of thinking to lyrics in a brand new way. A lot of times I'll get a subject, I'll get a word, and that that word will put me down a, a, a lane or a path. And living in Atlanta, there are places, the interstates are eight and nine, nine lanes wide. That one word could be your car, and that word could go in multiple lanes. Stop, dig in, take some time, look at that word, and think where can, how many different places can this word go? So dig in a little deeper with your, your lyric writing. It's good to have a plan, um, but also it's good to think out of the box. Be a little more creative from time to time with your approach to lyric writing. So last little thing that I, I, I want to, um, to give us today, um, on this whole, you know, not thinking about just writing a number one, but trying to write a good and a great song on this thought where we just left off and I wasn't going to end here, but I am going to end here on, um, you know, your approach to your lyric writing, both with structure and spontaneity, you know what, dig deep deeper that song that i from about this time tomorrow that i wrote in 15 minutes that was surface that wasn't deep there's no way 15 minutes can be deep um, it can but where i'm heading with this is you can always go deeper and when you think about it some of our most precious commodities in this world we have to dig deep to get oil gold diamonds they're they're not necessarily laying on the surface we've got to dig we've got to go deeper write your songs get your hook book like i was talking about take some time then to study what you've written let god speak to you so what he can speak through you write it down but then take some time to dig deeper into it don't leave that super super um Official, surface level. Let's go deeper with some things. Maybe you could write that next anthem, that next Jolene, you know, that next fancy. If you take the time to go a little deeper with your writing process than maybe you're currently doing. And I promise you, if you do that, if you apply this stuff 
to your writing. It's going to make this become what your best day yet. Y'all be blessed. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under the name The Charles Novell School of Music. And for more information on CNS and our upcoming events, like our online school, our weekend regional sessions, our creative coaching, and our pastor's retreat, you can visit us at our website at www. Dot cnsmusic.com. As you've listened to this episode, we hope that you've gained some information that you can apply to your music and to your ministry to make today the best day yet.